Vang Veng is the dream of outdoor adventurers, party fiends, and all kinds of tourists alike. This incredible tiny town in the undiscovered gem of Laos is quite easily one of the most beautiful places I've ever traveled to in my entire life. And coming from a Kiwi, that's a big compliment. Between its incredible viewpoints, various caves, incredible blue lagoons, delicious food, activities up in the sky, and tipsy tubing, there's something for everyone here. Join me for 48 hours in this incredible paradise where I'll share my experiences and recommendations with you. I hope you enjoy. If there is only one thing you do in your entire time in Vang Veng, it has to be going to one of the viewpoints at sunrise. Me and my friend woke up at 6am to head to Namze viewpoint and it is still one of my favourite things I've done in my entire time in Asia. All the hot air balloons were ascending into the sky, but the fog was still nestled down in the shaded valleys. This particular viewpoint is famous for its motorbikes and there's two of them up there, one facing north and the other facing south. Don't fall though, because that's not good for your health. <laughs> Wait, no, actually I'm not on that game. <laughs> yeah. Just like here is good, I reckon. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that was what I was going for, just because it's easiest. <laughs> Gangster. I wish I was filming. Honestly, my main question of the day is how they got up there. We were trying to work out if they would have dropped them in using a hot air balloon or if someone carried them up, but at any rate, it does make for some cool shots. Alright, slay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the fucking, when I've done like photo shoots before, they always say, alright, slay now. Oh my god. Time to slay. Time to slay. <laughs> yeah, have you ever wanted to do base jumping? What's that? Like where you jump off stuff like this yeah, with yeah. a parachute yeah, and yeah, just yeah, plummet. Yeah. yeah, although I would definitely shit myself. Metaphorically or literally? Move both. Nice. Yes, work it. <laughs> work that flag. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to take you seriously. Sorry. It does take around half an hour to get up and down and it's more of a climb than it is a walk or a hike but it makes it a good bit of fun. I had been told if you went up there at sunrise that there wouldn't be that many people around but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Maybe we just picked the wrong day but the view was still worth it regardless of how many people there were. We got back and ate some mango sticky rice, aka my favourite thing ever, before heading tipsy tubing. I love it. 
For me, this was actually sober tubing as I don't really drink. I think I had one sip of alcohol. It's very bright. Not a bad way to spend the weekend. Day, I don't even know what day of the week it is actually. That's bad, oh well. I'm trying to find something that can jump off. But essentially how it works is you hop in some tubes, you get driven to a random location, you don't know where you finish, and you just stop at a couple of bars along the way, get drunk or take your own alcohol. It's a bit of a disorganized shambles, but it's one of the must-do things in Vang Vang, and if I'm honest, it was still a good bit of fun. People who had been to Pai in Thailand said that the tipsy tubing there was much better. However, I still think the one in Vang Vang is worth doing, as the views from the river are so incredible, even though it can get quite shallow. Having a blast on whatever day of the week it is. Absolutely beautiful. Sun's up. Buns up, whatever it is you say. I'm just having a goddamn great day. My hair looks like a fucking mess, oh my god. Fantastic. So relaxing to like probably hit my bum on a rock. Yeah. Unfortunately, we only started around 1 p.m. and we actually didn't know where the end point was, so we were kind of just waiting until someone told us something. But as the sun set, it actually got really, really cold and I was freezing. The sun has gone down and it's actually just like freezing cold right now. So like, I don't know if you can go earlier in the day. It didn't seem like they'd let us. It was just like a scheduled thing, but it's pretty chilly now, so like, I don't know if Firmus, as crazy as it sounds, would be like fantastic, but yeah, I'm very ready to hop out soon, but I have no idea where like the takeout point is. Also like no idea how to get back to the hostel from where the takeout point is, because I don't know where the takeout point is, but I mean it all just falls into place, doesn't it? That's kind of the gist of things, but I'm hoping we're nearing the end because it is very cold, so I'm gonna go get some food, I'm hungry. Luckily, we made it out alive and I woke up the next morning to grab some delicious food to fuel me up. We were heading through to Jiang Cave, but found an abandoned building on the way. I've noticed that there's a lot of abandoned buildings around and some of these can be quite cool to explore, so always keep an eye out when you're walking to see if there's anything interesting around. Unfortunately, the famous orange bridge over the river that leads to Tam Chang Cave has actually been replaced, so we ended up missing out on that by about a month, which is a little bit disappointing. But the cave itself was absolutely fantastic, and you had a great view back over towards the city. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was really well lit, however, we did end up heading down to one area that wasn't, and it gave both me and Hiromi the heebie-jeebies, and we actually ran out of the cave quite quickly afterwards. There weren't too many people there, and the cave was absolutely incredible. I love the stagmalites, and there were lots of different chambers to explore.
Afterwards we went for a swim in the river nearby, before grabbing some lunch. I then had a lazy afternoon, but in next week's video I'll be exploring some of the Blue Lagoons and I'll be trying a lot of local cuisine, so tune in for that one. Toodles!